grab your text, grab your word. Stand with me if you can. I want to read a few verses into your hearing, and then we shall elaborate. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I want to read verse 24 through 27. Is that all right? Now, hear the word and add heed to the word. Amen? Hear the word and adhere to the word. Verse 24 says this, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run. Oh my God. So run that ye may obtain. 25 says, every man that striveth for mastery, which is to say compete for the prize, is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we incorruptible. Therefore, so run. Not as uncertainly. So fight I. So I fight. So fight I. Night, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep my body. I keep under my body. Which is to say discipline. I discipline my body. And bring it into subjection. Lest by any means. When I have preached to others. I myself. Should be a castaway. Disqualified. Unfit. Discharged. Why would I preach like this brother Drew? And be disqualified. Why would I give this much effort. And be unqualified. So, your installation topic, if you would, for this is conscientious objectives. Conscientious objectives. You can have your seats. Conscientious objectives. That simply means that I'm careful. I'm careful in my thought process how I approach this challenge because I got some victors, not victims, but I have some victors that are in this house or let me say it another way I have some conquerors that are in this house do I have any conquerors in the house I'm going to ask one more time I said do I have any conquerors in the house I know that you're in a challenge now you're in a contest now you're in a conflict now but have you conquered anything you conquered by coming in here this morning. You conquered a mindset that said I could have been somewhere else, doing something else that might, that might honestly appease my flesh a little better. But you conquered that mindset just getting here. So I have some conquerors in the house. That makes sense to anybody. I'm a conqueror. But why would I do all this effort and put forth all exude this much energy living for God preaching for God singing for God dancing for God praying worshiping why would I do all these things to be unfit oh come on pastor you're talking about conquering the plot of the enemy well, in order to conquer the plot of the enemy, you need to know what you're capable of. 
Somebody say I'm capable. Now watch this. The objectives set forth are twofold. Race for the prize. I'm talking about the text now. Race for the prize and be a disciplined pugilist. Boxer. Race for the prize. Or be a disciplined pugilist. Now, the two-fold objectives that I want to speak into your hearing today are run and fight. Oh, my God. I said run and fight. Now, run and fight are not normal companions. I said run and fight are not normal companions. Normal, normally you would hear stand and fight. Run and retreat. But I want to intrigue your mind this morning and say run and fight. Because you see it's a different mindset when you run into the fight. Got to understand my military background. I was a Marine for eight years, and what they we run into the fight. It's a whole different mindset when you run into the fight. You don't provoke the fight, but you run into the fight. It's a different character to run into the fight. Run and fight. They complement and they condition each other on so many levels. Amen? They run. We run and we fight. They complement. They condition each other. One complements the other. The other conditions the other. Is that all right? Run that ye may obtain. Somebody say there is purpose. See, I need to know why I'm running. Even the person that's running for a mere earthen contest understands why they're running. They're running for a crown that's incorruptible, but it has some meaning in their life, right? So they run to obtain something. So I'm not just running just to run. I'm, I don't have a Forrest Gump anointing. I, I would just start running. No! There was a purpose for my running. Somebody say there is purpose. There is purpose. Point to point. Point to point. No matter what kind of running that you're doing when you're purposely running, even if you're training, even if you're conditioning yourself, hit me closely, even if you're conditioning yourself, you train yourself to run from one point to another point. Even if you change speeds, you still run at a certain speed from one point to another point. When you start out, you tend to reserve some of your energy so that you'll have some left over. Am I talking to anybody? If you're running a distance, then you reserve some of your energy so that you can reach the point that you want to run. So you start at a good pace, but you don't start in a dead sprint usually. When we're talking about distance. And so what he's saying is you've got to start running with a condition because you're running for a reason. And I'm conditioning myself, even when I'm training, to go from point to point. All right? So understand and get this, that every occupation on earth requires running of some sort. I said every occupation on earth requires running of some sort. Now, of course... We always pair running up with the physical. When I say run, you automatically think of somebody running. Is that right? But running is more than just physical. It's also emotional. How many people have emotions that have run wild? And when your emotions run wild, you're not able to control your emotions. So even your emotions run. And then there's the psychological aspect of running. 
Because even when you're sitting still, your mind is running. Anybody finding yourself with their mind running? If you're doing your job, your mind's going to run. How do I get from point A to point B? Even when you're configuring something, I got a desk job, glory to God. But even in that desk job, my mind is running. How do I go from this thing to the next point? Even if you have a physical job, you're running even though you may not be in a sprint or a running mode, but your mind is running. How do I get this object to this object? How do I hook this up to this? So it doesn't matter what occupation you have, you are conditioned to run. But it's the discipline that makes the conditioning work. Does that make sense? So, but I want to focus here because we can go on so many different areas of just running, whether we be talking about psychological, emotional, amen, physical, spiritual. We can touch all those, but I want to give you a perspective. So I want our focus to be here is a military perspective. Is that all right? And so I want to annotate here that from a military perspective, that running is a principal qualifier. I say running is a principal qualifier. Now, they got all kind of different classes of speed, but you have to meet a certain time frame before you even get into service. Oh, I, I'm talking to you naturally here, but I want you to pick it up spiritually. I say you have to meet a certain time frame in order to be qualified to continue training. Am I talking to anybody? We can't even get to the next level of training unless you meet certain time Marcus, so there's a qualifier that constitutes the running. Does that make sense? So even in the military, look, before you pick up a rifle, they want to see, can you run? Never mind. I say, before you pick up a weapon, can you run? I want to ask the church a question this morning. Can you run? So running is a principal qualifier. And so I begin to think about the different things, even military, uh, that, that have to deal with a military perspective and a mindset of what are these point to points that we run to from this perspective. And I told you already about the training. We got to run from point to point in a certain time period. But all that running from point to point and getting from point A to point B in a hurried fashion. Hurry up and wait. All my military folks are like, yes, Lord. But getting from point to point, but then after training and then when you get to go into the field and when you go into what you're supposed to do and we're dealing with a battle aspect, there's a lot of points that you got to deal with. So you have an entry point. Somebody say entry point. So the entry point is a site of passage into the challenge and the conflict. The conflict doesn't, when, when, when you're a, a soldier, you, what happens is even when you're ambushed from a certain aspect, that is still a point of entry, amen. But normally when you're going over and you're intentionally going to fight something, you understand that when I leave my base, because my base is the place of safety. My base is the place where I collect all my arsenal. But when I leave base, I'm leaving there to go into a challenge. I'm leaving my base to go into a conflict. See, this is your base. This is your place of safety. Amen. I won't allow anybody to attack you here. Amen. This is not a place of attack. Amen. But once we leave this place, what we have to do is enter another realm. How many people have left church with a good word? I ain't talking about one that you didn't receive. With a good word. And the minute you stepped out the door, you came under attack. That was your point of entry. Does that make sense? So, point to point. The entry point. This is the place where I enter the challenge and the conflict. And then... There's a checkpoint. Now the checkpoint is a reference location used to control movement. 
And so a checkpoint will be the place that once you enter into a battle, you may win this skirmish. You may win this occasion, but the battle's not over. The war isn't over. You won the battle, but the war isn't over. So now we got to come out of this conflict, this challenge, and now we got to reach another checkpoint. And so the checkpoint is a point, no matter whose checkpoint it is, it's a, it's a location that controls movement. Because the checkpoint says once we reach here, we're going to go to the left. Once we reach here, we're going to go to the right. Once we reach here, we're going to go north. Once we reach here, we're going to go south. Am I talking to anybody? Say, I need a checkpoint. Because even when we believe in God, we need checkpoints to help us to get to the next place in God. You might be doing exactly what God called you to do, but you still need a checkpoint to make sure that I'm on task and I'm going to the next battle. I'm going to the next level. I'm going to the next place in God. That's my checkpoint. It's controlling my movement. Then there's a rally point. And the rally point is the designated place of assembly or reassembly because let's be honest, every battle isn't easy. Every battle isn't one that I'm going to dominate. Some I barely win. Some I get out by the skin of my teeth. Amen. I get out, I get, I get out by, I just, I just barely get out of this battle. And so I need a rally point. So I look to my leadership for a rally point to tell me where are we going to reassemble? Because sometimes during the battle, you get scattered. And I'm even talking about a mental battle. Sometimes you're trying to battle something in your mind, and then your thoughts get scattered. And when your thoughts get scattered, you can't concentrate on how to conquer the issue. So what the enemy tries to do is scatter your thoughts so that you can't focus. Remember, the enemy doesn't need to kill you. All he needs to do is distract you. And sometimes our thoughts get scattered. Sometimes our actions get scattered. Anybody had a whole lot to do and tried to do it all and completed none of it. You touched it all. You touched it all. You thought that you, you, thought that you were a multitasker. I'm a multitasker. You might get two or three of them done. You might get four or five of them done, but it'd be that one thing that's left out. But what the, what the point is talking about here is, the point of the matter, is saying the rally point. I have got to get to a point where I say I need to focus on this battle. I don't know what your battle is this morning, what you're going through. I know that even in success, there's battles. So you might be successful. You might be under stress. You might have health concerns, but there's a battle that you're in. Anybody in a battle in this place? So what I need you to do with the battle that you're facing is to Focus your thoughts on the present battle. There are battles down the road, but don't concentrate on those battles because they're not here yet. You need to focus. There's, there's, there's some things in the past that you wish that you would have won, but you didn't win those battles. But they're past. You're at another point now. You've got to collect your thought. You can't keep living in your past. You can't keep fighting your past. I don't want to get ahead of myself. You can't keep fighting your past. And fighting for a future that you're not preparing for right now. You cannot fight for a future that you're not preparing for right now. Does that make sense? Then there's a point that some of us like the extraction point. That's the specified area providing transport out of the battle zone because let's be honest, sometimes we get in them, them, them battles in them and we just need somebody to pull us out. Anybody ever need to just get pulled out of battle? Just, just God, I'm not, I'm, I'm not winning. This is, this is, I'm not going to get out by the skin of my, God, pull me out. Anybody ever had to say, God, pull me out? Anybody had God snatched them out of conflict? Lot, lot better bless God that he was snatched out of conflict. He didn't even want to move, but God snatched him out of conflict. Sometimes the enemy is so heavy against you and you don't know what to do, and God snatches you out of the conflict. Anybody can bless God that he snatched me out of some of these conflicts. And what happens, the, the, 
the real defining of an extraction point is, man, we've got to get you out of here. Because this is on you. Right now, if we don't move you out of here, the, the, the importance of you moving out of here is greater than even winning the battle. I need you to hear me. I've got to get you out of here. It's so important for, for me to get you out of this moment. That this battle, don't you worry about it. That battle will handle itself. But I've got to pull you out. That's what the extraction point is. When there are people that have certain information, they have to, they have to create extraction points. Some forcibly, like lie. I got to force you out of here. You may not even want to be removed from it, but we've got to extract you because of who you are and how this condition is. This is, this is your battle to fight. We've got to pull you somewhere else. Anybody glad that they got snatched out? They got pulled out. And within these challenges and conflicts that we faced, so we've got entry points, we've got checkpoints, we've got rally points, we've got extraction points, we've gone point to point to point to point. But within those points, within the challenge and the conflict, there are turning points and there are tipping points. There are turning points and there are tipping points. The turning point is graceful, but deliberate. Anybody at a turning point is graceful and it's deliberate. I'm at a turning point in my life where God is shifting some things in my life and it's graceful and it's deliberate. I see the change happening and it's intentional. Say it's intentional. When you take a turn, even in your vehicle, it ought to be graceful. It shouldn't be sharp. Anybody ever been driving with somebody that had to turn suddenly and it kind of snapped you? That ain't a turning point. That's a tipping point. The turning point is the graceful and deliberate shifting of God in your life. Well, God is telling you, he's giving you the signal because you're driving and you're driven. But he's giving you the signal that we're about to turn. So what happens before you turn is you tend to slow down a little. Come on here, church. You slow down a little bit so that you make the turn successfully. And you accelerate after the turn. Y'all think I'm talking about beer because I need somebody to get with me today. Come on, get with me, church. I say you accelerate after the turn. Some of us are mad because we're slowing down right now. I'm telling you, church, that your turn is coming. And after the turn, then comes the acceleration. If you want the acceleration, you got to wait on the turn. Oh my God, that's good to me. I said, if you want acceleration, you got to wait on, God help me here. I said, if you want acceleration, you got to wait on the turn. Say, I'm waiting on the turn. Somebody say, I want my turn. I want my turn. That deliberate, that graceful shifting of God. Then there's a tipping point. There's also a tipping point. Now, the tipping point is incremental. It's incremental. But it's sometimes sudden. The incremental was the thing that happened before it. Because if you were to put something on this ledge, the weight of it will determine how long it can sit there. And the force that comes against it will determine how long it's going to sit there. So I'm wondering how long are some of us going to sit here? Never mind. Because some of us have been sitting on the edge of decision for so long that something cataclysmic had to happen in our life for God to shift our thinking. Can I get a witness in here? The shifting is when he pushes you over the ledge. It's when there's a push. It may be subtly at first. 
But then it's drastic. It's sudden. The tipping point. Now the turning point of the battle is when you see that I'm not losing anymore. God is shifting things in my life. And I'm waiting on my turn. I know I'm winning. I'm just waiting for my turn. That's when you know it's happening. That's the, that's the turning point of the battle. Say, I want my turn. So the turning point of the battle is the deliberate shifting of God in our life when we understand that something's happening and we see it coming. The tipping point. The tipping point is also imperative and under, uh, is, is significant in the battle because sometimes I need a tipping point in the battle. Sometimes I need something sudden to happen. Sometimes I need something drastic to happen. Anybody just needed something drastic to happen with their faith. Because I've seen a turn. I've, I've gone through these things. But sometimes I need something sudden to happen. And when sudden happens, it gets our attention a lot quicker. Because some of us aren't appreciating our turn. Oh, oh, come on. That's layered right there. That's layered right there. Some of us aren't appreciating our turn. And God will tip us. And then, oh, my God. But either which way, when we're talking with the turning point and the tipping point, that something is shifting. And what the tipping point conveys is an irreversible instance. When the tip is happening, once you once you once you on that downward spiral, once you once you've gone over the edge, so to speak, there ain't no turning back. There ain't no turning back. And so there comes a tipping point when we're battling, when we're saying, I'm not going back. I've been forced over, I've been I've been pushed past my, my comfort zone. God, the, the tipping point often happens in our comfort zone because if he were to turn you from your comfort zone, you go, you'd be like, hold on, I kind of like it back here. We just got to bring you to a tipping point in our comfort zone sometimes because we'll stay right there. Even though we're not, we're not doing anything. We're not really winning. We're not really, we're just kind of there. But then we'll face a tipping point. Does that help anybody? Now, verse 25 expresses that our purpose is not perishable. Our purpose is not perishable. Therefore, run ye that you may obtain. There's purpose to it. And our purpose is not perishable. Run that you may obtain. Not aimlessly. Not aimlessly. Run that you may obtain. If I got to get from this point to the next point, I'm running with a purpose. If I'm running to my checkpoint, then I'm doing so with a purpose. If I'm running even to my point of entry, because again, I told you, it's a different mindset when you run into the fight. You didn't provoke the fight, but you ran. Once the fight was created, okay. Once the enemy show up in your face, you don't have a decision whether you want to fight or not. Anybody ever had discussions like, oh, I'm not ready to fight with you right now, devil. I'm just, I'm just, I'm done. Uh, oh, spirit, I'm not ready to fight with you. Spirit of fear, I'm not ready to fight with you. Uh, 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 spirit of jealousy, I'm not ready to fight with you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 a stronghold, I'm not ready to fight with you. Anybody ever had a, 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 a nice uh, discussion with whatever was attacking you? Say so it don't happen like that. Don't happen like that. Even if you know the battle's coming, there ain't no discussion. We're going to fight today. <laughs> you might, you might, if you're old school, get to put up your dukes. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but we're talking about the boxing, and, and once you get to the ring, they tell you protect yourself at all times. Does that make sense? But our purpose is not perishable. Run that you may attain. Now hear this. Don't occupy the grandstands. Oh my God. I say run that you may attain. You got to understand that Paul is Roman coaching. And so he's seen games. He's seen Olympic-like contests. And he's thinking, and we're sitting up, he said, run that you may obtain. But we got to realize that sometimes we've been watching other people running. And we're excited about them running. But we've been sidelined with injuries. Never mind. 
We've been sidelined with injuries or we've become a fan. We've become a fan of the preacher. We've become a fan of the praise and worship leader. We've become a fan, a fanatic. That's what it's short for. You know that, right? Become an admirer. Fan might be too strong of a word for y'all. We become an admirer of the prophet and the apostle. And the evangelist, the, the, the teacher of God, the, 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 the elder. I become a fan. And I become so much of an admirer that I've stopped competing. I've stopped making efforts for myself because I'm watching. And I'm watching so hard that I'm not using them as an example. I'm using them as entertainment. And now I'm a fan, so I find myself in the grandstand. Now, oh, in no regard am I telling you not to celebrate your brothers and your sisters as they make their effort to attain the crown that you're trying to attain. But I'm saying don't become so much of an admirer that you occupy the grandstands. Oh, that's lead. I say that you occupy the grandstands, that you play, you, you, you sit in the grandstand. Never mind. And you applaud the things that are grand. The people that are winning. You applaud the people that are winning and that's grand. And so now, because you occupy the grandstand, you start grandstanding. So if you occupy the grandstands, you'll start grandstanding. Never mind. And so now, now we start putting other people against other people. Now you start Comparing who preaches best. Really? That's occupying the grandstands. Paul or Apollos? Hold on, wait a minute. I thought that we was in this thing for Jesus. That's from people that occupy the grandstands. Don't applaud the sermon so much that you don't do what the sermon is saying. Does that make sense to everybody? Truth be told, that this is not merely an earthen contest. So what we're talking about here, we ain't talking about some menial race to win a trophy, to win a crown. It's a fight for eternity. Say, I'm in a fight for eternity. What are you trying to win? What, what are you trying to win? You ain't trying to win my approval. I hope not. Because that's going to die with me. Oh, never mind. I say, I say, I say, that's going to die. You're trying to live for somebody and it's going to die with them. This is a fight for eternity. Say I'm in a fight for eternity. Now, because we've come through this series, we know the enemy's strategy. And we've learned to dismiss his propaganda. Mm -hmm. We found ourselves that we have and we belong to the resistance. We must understand that we have a fight on our hands. Somebody say fight. Fight. Not beating the air is what the text said. But there is a purpose. Verse 27, Paul expresses that I discipline my body, not as one beating the air. That's what we were making reference to a little bit earlier when I said you're fighting your past. When you try and fight your past, you're beating the air. Never mind. I say when you try and fight your past, you're beating the air. When you try and fight Rumors, you're fighting the air. Rumors have no substance. That's why they're rumors. They're not facts, they're rumors. Right? Because the Bible tells us there will be wars and rumors of wars. See, there's a difference between a fight and a rumor. One more time, say there's a difference. Between a fight 
and a rumor. We've been fighting rumors, beating the air. Oh, my goodness. And when Paul is giving us the illustration, can you see the illustration? Somebody, even if they got a good stance, they got a horrible stance. It looks crazy. What you bossing? What are you hitting? Paul is saying to us, the scripture is saying to us, when we fight, we don't do it like a boxer or a pugilist who beats the air. So I'm not fighting something that I can't put my hands on. I'm not fighting something that's out of the realm of my control. Your past is out of the realm of your control. Let me say it one more time. Your past is out of the realm of your control. You're trying to handle a ghost. So what am I telling you to fight for? I'm saying fight for your now. That your future may be better. Fight for your now so that when you get past today, that you won't have to fight today. That when today becomes yesterday, it doesn't become another fight that you're beating the air against. Does that make sense to anybody? There is a purpose. He said, I discipline my body. Now, discipline is imperative in both the race and the fight. Discipline is imperative because if I'm running a distance, then I've got to pace myself. Say, I got to pace myself. Amen. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. So I've got to, dis I've got to pace myself. I've got to know when to accelerate and when to slow down. Because there's going to be seasons in your life, seasons in your life where God is going to tell you to slow down. And if you don't slow down, he'll slow you. Never mind. And there's also some seasons in your life where God will tell you, now is the time to accelerate. And if you don't accelerate, then he'll push you. Amen? But I got to discipline myself. I got to pace myself for this run. Now, I told you that they complement each other and they condition each other. So isn't it something how when you see pretty much any athlete that one of the main training regiments is running when the boxer trains you know what he does he runs you know what the soldiers do when they train they run and then they run some more they'll tell you to run until they get tired Run! I need you to learn how to run uphill. I need you to run how to run downhill. First, I'm going to let you run with no gear. Y'all ain't hearing me spiritually. First time, I'm going to let you run with no gear so that you get used to the motion of it. But then I'm going to put some things on you. And you got to learn how to run with what's on you. Say, I got to learn to what's run to run what's on me. I got to learn to run with what's on me because God has put something on your life and some of us see it as a burden. No, baby, that's your duty. Your, oh, God, help me here. Your assignment is what protects you. I said your assignment is what protects you. As long as you're doing your assignment in God, he's going to cover you. Does that make sense? So we're running under the assignment of God. And sometimes it feels heavy, but he's conditioning us to run. He's telling us here in the text, run and fight. So when I'm running, I'm conditioning myself for the fight of my life. For the fight of my life. And I've got to be conditioned to do it. Is this helping anybody? I got a discipline. It's imperative that I have discipline. We are not fighting for nothing. And we're not fighting over 
nothing. And we're not fighting against nothing. Does that help anybody? We must have discipline. Our discipline includes prayer, study, worship, and subjection. It says, I bring my body into subjection, self-denial. Sometimes it's easy to pray, especially when we only know how to ask God for stuff. Them the easy prayers. God, give me. God, bring me. God, do it. Them the easy prayers. Bless my family. You think you be being deep. Bless my family. Bless my folks. Bless my friends. Bless my business. Them the easy prayers. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless, bless me, God. <laughs> but that's a discipline because the Bible tells us we ought always, what? So it's something that we should be doing continually. So that's one of our disciplines. Another one of our disciplines is study. Now, study ain't something that all of us do. But the Bible tells us to study to show that self-approval workman under God need not be ashamed. Rightly what? Dividing the word of truth. The only way I'm going to learn how to operate in all of this information that I've been given is to study. I just can't come here and just listen. I've got to study. Yes, I got to receive instruction. Yes, I got to receive impartation. But some of that impartation and instruction can come if I just sit down and study. So study is a discipline. Say study is a discipline. You ought to have a regiment of study. Oh, I know this might, might not make you leap out your seat, but you got to have a regiment of study. And then, though the understanding of it isn't always where it needs to be, you got to have a regiment of worship. And true worship requires your obedience. True worship, so one of your disciplines is obedience unto God. Whatever he says, that's what you do. That discipline is called nevertheless. That makes sense? And even that thing right there, though it may not be easy, it's something that we understand. It's something that we try to accept. But the thing that we struggle most with, or one of the things that we really, really struggle with, is not so much accepting the will of God. Doing the will of God has its challenges, Amen. But most of us that are believers accept the will of God. You say, I accept the will of God. Well, accepting isn't, isn't proven until you actually do it. You realize that, right? But the accepting part of it is the easy part. Well, I accept the will of God. But then he'll ask you to do it. And sometimes doing the will of God will cause you to have to bring your body into subjection. Because what happens when God tells you to stop doing the thing that isn't evil that you like? What if God says, uh, you can't go to that book club? The, the, the book club, ain't, it's a book club. We reading good, clean books. You can't go to the book club because your study time is lacking. You go in there talking about science fiction and don't know the Lord's truth. We talk about movies all the time. You can watch a movie that ain't dirty or whatever, have you have a discussion about it, you ain't going to hell. But there'll be sometimes where God will be like, you need to withdraw from that. But what is that one thing? And what if it's that one thing that you really, you just really like? I got one that I really like. I know only got a certain amount of time to do it in because God's gonna be like, nope, you're gonna have to put that down. And 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 I'm wondering because I haven't got there yet, but I know it's coming because he's giving me signals. <laughs> he's giving me signals. And there's a time where we'll have to, I'm going to have to turn and go ahead and accelerate, amen. But it's that you're going to have to put that down. And I'm wondering, and I'm wondering, oh, yeah, I'm sitting up here preaching. You tell me, I'm wondering, man, am I going to be ready? Because I can preach and say, I'm going to be ready. Yes. But when it happened, be like, well, God, could you give me another month? No. God, could you give me another instance? No. What if God tells you to stop? The ministry that he told you to start. What if God tells you to stop the ministry that he told you to start? <laughs> what if God tells you, oh yeah, you can do that part. 
but you can't do this part. You can bring the supplies for the church, but you can't build it. You're a man after my own heart. You can bring the supplies, but you can't build it. You can put up the money, but you can't build it. What happens when God tells you no about the good thing? Oh, God says no about the bad thing. We like, okay, God, I can deal with that. Yes, yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, God. Yes and amen. But what about the good thing that says you can't do that? That's not for you. What happens when we have to truly deny ourselves? Huh? Watch this. Glory is determined by discipline and denial. I said glory is determined by discipline and denial. I said something on the other night that glory does not come at our comfort level. So the glory of God didn't come at the comfort of Christ. It came at his sacrifice. Say the glory's coming on my sacrifice. Discipline reminds me that in all of this flesh and effort, I would not allow myself, I would not allow myself to eliminate my witness. Discipline reminds me that in all this faith and all this effort, I'm not going to allow myself to eliminate my witness. We've got to get enough discipline in us to where we start living what we're preaching and not just preaching. Because your advice is real good until you have to take it. Sacrifice is a powerful word to preach until it has to be proclaimed in your body. Does that make sense? This is what Paul saying. He said, man, I can't do all this preaching. I can't do all this running. I can't do all this fighting just to be unfit. I can't do all this playing, all this dancing, all this singing, all this running. I can't do it and be disqualified. I can't be in this Lord's army just to be discharged. Dishonorably. Can't do it. Can't do it. So what does that mean? I'm going to have to discipline myself. There's some things that he's going to say no to, and I got to say no as well. There's going to be some things he says yes to that I don't want to do, and I got to say yes to him as well. I've got to deny myself. We run, and we fight full of purpose for a purpose. We will conquer the plot. We will conquer the plot. Because our discipline is superior to the serpent. That's how we conquer the plot of the enemy. That's how we conquer the plot of the wicked one. When our discipline is superior to the serpent. See, the reason why the devil fell, why Lucifer fell, is because he couldn't discipline his thoughts. The thought crossed his mind that you can be greater than God, and he fell for it. Never mind. And he fell for it because he couldn't discipline his mind. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I ain't greater than God. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> mm -mm. You in heaven. You can ask for prayer. <laughs> Jesus, help my mind for real. God helped my mind. I had this thought. I don't even know where it came from. Pride had creeped up. So you know pride when it's coming, when it's puffing itself up. You know it. You know it. The discipline is saying, no, I'm not going to receive you. Because 
it's easy to fight that which is external. But when it's internal, the conflict becomes intimate. There's nothing more trying than intimate conflict. There ain't no fight worse than a fight between a husband and a wife. That's intimate conflict. There's no greater battle that we face than a battle that we face between ourselves. The reason why you haven't reached some goals was not because the enemy was attacking your life. It was because the mindset has, that you accepted had now set in and now betrayed you. Doubt became an entity that sat at your table, ate your food, and you served it meal at the meal at the meal with your I can't and I couldn't. I don't have an example. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have the other. You're feeding your doubt. Now, I'll pray for my enemy, but no way in the Bible does it tell me to feed him. <laughs> I ain't feeding you. I ain't feeding you. I ain't gonna help you get shown to fight me. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Not continually. Amen. If the Lord tell me I gotta bless you with one meal, he, I'll tell you what, every time you eat on me, the Lord is telling me to do that. The Lord. Also circumstances where God had people take care of their enemy for a little bit, but man, look here. Don't get comfortable. This is the Lord's doing. I don't know if it's marvelous in my eyes right now, but this is this is the Lord's doing. You better bless him. <laughs> I'm not gonna continually feed my enemy to get stronger to fight against me. So stop feeding the enemy of your mind. Learn how to conquer the plot. We run and we fight full of purpose and for a purpose. We conquer the plot because our discipline is superior to the serpent. We will conquer the plot because we have divine purpose. You don't know how you're going to win. Or you won't even try to win if you don't have a purpose. If there's no award, why are you playing? There's no word, what, what are you doing it for? Even when you just play pickup ball, you know, you got bragging rights, right? Even when you play pickup ball, you still playing for bragging rights. Are you not? You playing so that you keep downs on the court. See, we think it's, no, you, you your, even life is teaching you stuff. What do you do? Anybody that play ball know you want to win. First, you want to get on the court. That's your entry point. You know, it's principle. It, it, it just works. It just works. That's your entry point, right? Checkpoints when you bounce. Never mind. I was gonna get too deep into it. Check. Y'all know how y'all back in the day. Check. Anyway, so so that's your entry point. But you want to stay there until they close the park down. Am I talking to anybody? Why? So you can have bragging rights. So you can have bragging rights. So that when you come to the court next time, they trying to get you on their team. Hey, 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 bro. Hey, bro. We want you on our side. That's what you do it for. So no matter what you're in, you're in it for something. Even if you choose to keep your, your level at your job, you're doing it, what? You say, I don't want to become a supervisor, right? But I bet you want to pick up salary. So why do you keep working hard so you can pick up the next salary? Even if you don't have any intention of being a supervisor, I bet you want that pay raise, though. So everything that you do, you do it for a reason. So why would we get in this life and then not understand that we have a purpose? here. So we win not because we have just some purpose of bragging. No, we have a purpose that's divine. Say, I have a purpose that's divine. Last thing. We run. We fight. We conquer. We run. We fight. We conquer. Run, fight, conquer, repeat. Run, fight, conquer, repeat. 
run, fight, conquer, repeat. From point to point to point to point, run, fight, conquer, repeat. Give God praise all over this place. <laughs>